Good afternoon and welcome to this webinar of Merkel International. Um, today I will be talking about some newly tested solutions to the EN 1366 part two and part three. My name is Miriam Rickley. This webinar will take approximately 30 minutes. It might be slightly longer. So with the agenda, I first will explain a little bit who we are. And then I will talk about the compartmentation and the criteria for fire resistant penetrations, because that's what it's all about. I will explain very briefly the Molkel portfolio, but then mainly go into some newly tested solutions that are really innovative solutions for your applications on site. I will also very briefly explain more about the Molkel digital tools and especially the multi-selector, which is just such a great tool that can help you anywhere because it's accessible from everywhere. So we are a Dutch manufacturer of, of fire stopping materials and we supply the whole European market. Um, we try to have very innovative products as well that we all test at third party accredited institutions as well. Our head offices are in uh, Middelburg in the Netherlands and we are specialists on fire protection and um, uh, materials for the passive fire protection. We also have a training institute in the Netherlands, as you can see on the picture. We started testing in 2015, and then um, when we were happy with these tests, all by accredited institutes, we started production in 2016 and then sales uh, after that as well. Um, so we are still a very young company, as you can see. And we've been in the UK since 2019. Um, we are since uh, recently also member of the ASFP uh, here in the UK, but then also we are members in uh, Holland of the BBN and in Belgium of the PFPA as well. Um, we find it very important to be members of these institutions, making sure that uh, we do everything to improve the fire safety in general and in, um, in these countries and by doing the right thing. We also have been recently um, ISO 9001 certified, which is like a quality management certification. Um, this is both for the products and our processes that we have in place as well. So for us, the end user is, um, is the main focus. And um, we try to listen to the end user and the installer, making sure that we provide solutions that they are that they need in the market actually so you can see like very congested solutions or something like that but also quite a lot of new uh, pipe materials that haven't been tested previously we try to um, test now as well and we will come up uh, we'll, we'll get into this new testing in a few minutes as well so the testing is based on real life situations and we look at what the problems are on site, uh, not only in um, the location and applications of these services, but also the new materials that we have at the moment as well. Now, any of the new innovations, it's important that it's practical. It's, uh, you still need to be able to install it, even though it looks absolutely brilliant on paper and brilliant in a furnace. If you can't install it easily and quick, it's just not going to happen or it's going to happen wrong. Um, by making sure that it's also easy and quick to install, you will have cost savings automatically as well um, because of the time um, issue that you use less time. Now, each of the solutions we have uh, on our website is based on either an ETA or a test report or classification report. Now, I know it's just a pain to read all through these um, test reports because they are very long and the ETAs are very long. So we've got a tool for you, the multi-selector, which allows you to search in a really quick way what solutions you can use. And then you know for sure also that you have a tested solution. I will come into that a little bit later at the end of the webinar. Um, so the compartmentation criteria. First of all, there's the 
load bearing, you don't want your wall or your floor to collapse in the time that is required for your uh, compartmentation criteria. So you need to make sure that the wall has at least the same load bearingness or the floor as is needed for your services penetrations. Then we're looking at the integrity of the fire stopping. And this is like flames and smokes and gases that can't go to the cold side of the compartmentation wall. Um, this is done with like a cotton wool, which um, would ignite if it's um, if it's um, if there are gases, because you can't always see the smoke and the gases or the flames. Then there's thermal insulation, which actually means that on the cold side of the wall or the floor, of course, you don't get an temperature increase and for the compartmentation of the fire stopping this is a maximum of 180 degrees difference and um, this is mainly due to the fact that there are quite a lot of materials that will start um, com combusting and igniting on its own without any flames or uh, etc around it but it can still set fire to themselves such as papers and wall coverings textiles, et cetera, as well. So that's why we're looking very close at the thermal insulation as well. Then there's the fourth one, which is the heat radiation. But this is measured at one meter off your wall, and which is mainly to do with uh, glazed screen and shutters, etc. less with the fire stopping of the compartmentation. It's also important to have your supports of the surfaces at reasonably close centers to the wall. That's how it's tested. And that's um, as well, we can't influence it, but you on site can influence that by making sure that these are supported. Um, because if they aren't, it can be by movement of pipes or cables, etc., that the whole fire stopping might be pulled out of the opening. Now for our multicolor slim, this is often 450 millimeter to either side of the wall or on the top of a floor. The next thing that's important that we look at is what is the pipe being used for? A plastic pipe will melt in a furnace and will melt in a fire. And so that's always tested as open in the furnace side, whilst a metal pipe won't melt. And so therefore it can be just closed on the furnace side because there's no chance for the fire to get actually into the pipe whilst with plastic it is. But if we're looking, for example, at a rainwater pipe or a vented waste pipe, which is open to the, um, to the outside, um, it can draw air in, but also the overpressure that's created in a fire and therefore in a furnace can get out and create a pressure difference. So any seal that's being created needs to be able to withstand this pressure as well. Whilst if we look at a plastic pipe for a closed system, so anything that has a valve on the end, for example, gas or heating or water supply, then um, it is a closed system. So it doesn't draw any air in. And also there won't be any difference in the um, in pressure inside the furnace or outside the furnace. So that can be tested as uncapped, capped or open and closed. Now for metal pipes, it's closed on the inside of the furnace because the metal won't melt in a normal fire. And so you can test it as a closed system. And closed closed is the only thing I can think of a decommissioned pipe, to be honest. So it's important to look at what the pipe is being used for. If it's like a rainwater pipe or a vented waste pipe that's open to the outside, you should test it as uncapped, uncapped, or it has to be tested as uncapped, uncapped, because that's representing the real life situation. And you can use the, those tests also for any of the other options, because it's the worst case scenario. However, you can't do the other way around where you've got it uncapped, capped for a uh, rainwater pipe or a vented waste pipe. So we're looking at all these options that we have. Now, we always uh, get our solutions tested at official test institute, third party test institutes, and for example, effectives and boats. And we are looking then also at other institutes, as you can see here throughout Europe, that uh, will be able to write the ETAs for us and the classification reports. 
Now, this is actually what the test wall will look like, for example. And so all our molecule products have got an ETA and have got classification reports, and they can be tested like for the dampers, uh, penetrations or linear joints. But then we are looking at the different type of material. Um, as I said, of course, plastic will melt in the fire. Metal doesn't melt in a normal indoor fire. But plastic can be PVC, it can be HDPE, it can a multi, be a multi-layer pipe, for example. So we're looking at the different types of materials as well. And of course, different diameters. You can see actually quite <coughs> excuse me, easily from quite small pipes to very large pipes. Then we're also looking at like the different wall thicknesses of the materials because some pipes can be very, have a very thin wall and some of course have a very thick wall, but also the insulation that we can find around the pipes. And I'm not quite sure if it's visible for um, you, but in the top left corner on the page, you can actually see like a pipe with like an elastomeric insulation. We find it important and certainly with metal pipes where you need insulation for prevention of condensation, for example, that you do not need to remove this insulation, but you need your fire stopping around this insulation just to make sure that the gap will be closed if there is a fire and the insulation melts away. And so, as I mentioned, we test for capped and uncapped as well. And all this is tested for both integrity and insulation. So it's very important that you look at all these criteria to make sure that your fire stopping is designed and tested on how it's being used. So you're making sure that you maintain your compartmentation. Here again, a close-up of this, uh, this wall again. You can also see that we test it in different configurations as well, not straight through the wall, but even at an angle as well. Now, when we test in a wall for an hour rating, at least, um, that always has to be done in a, in a flexible wall with two layers of plasterboard to both sides of the walls. And this is always a thickness of at least 100 millimeter. Um, that is required for any walls that are one hour rating. It's, it's just prescribed. We do, however, also have tested in walls that are 75 millimeter thickness and that have one layer of plasterboard to each side of the walls. But then, of course, the rating can't be as high because the partition might not be able to achieve as high. Then it's probably difficult to see. You can see a lot of thermocouples as well on the wall. And they actually measure very precisely what the temperature difference is. So if it's 20 degrees in the testing institute, then the maximum temperature uh, that it's allowed to go up to is 200 degrees. So it's the ambient temperature plus 180 degrees. And that's it. Um, you can't go any higher than that. Otherwise, it will fail the test at that stage. Then you can see like the, um, the white dots on the end. That all means that it's a capped pipe. So it's uncapped inside the furnace. And here you're looking at the outside of the furnace where it's capped. And yes, you guessed it, the other ones that don't have anything in are tested as uncapped, uncapped. So it's very important to test for the right uh, application. So here is just a little overview of all the multiple portfolio, all the products that we have. And I will very briefly go through, uh, through each one of them. The Multicolor Slim, I think this is our most um, famous, uh, I should say, um, pipe collar. It's a flexible pipe collar, mainly for the like combustible pipes that have this uncapped, uncapped scenario for rainwater pipes and vented waste pipes, for example. But it can also be used for the insulation materials, like the combustible insulation around metal pipes, uh, multi-layer pipes, for example. And even we've got like a lot of combined surfaces where you can have like a pipe and some cables in the same opening. And we've tested that as well. And then, for example, where the pipe doesn't go at a straight angle through the wall as well. So loads and loads of options with that. The multi-term bandage is mainly for metal pipes that haven't got insulation and where you still need to achieve that thermal insulation of your fire rating. So you can, because it's on a roll, you can just 
add this to the pipe depending on the fire rating you need and the diameter of the pipes etc we also have some newly tested solutions where we use it on cable trays or for example flexible gas pipes uh, the flexible gas pipes i will show the example in a minute the multi-disc is a very small self-adhesive disc for small penetrations and small cable trays uh, plastic pipes and multi-layer pipes the multi mastic C system, which is our coated board system, which has like two different coated boards, but it also has the coating itself and the multi mastic SP. So it's a complete system. And of course, it's tested with all our other fire stopping that we have as well. Then we have the multi mastic SP on its own as well, which is our um, fire stopping mastic, and which is very good, for example, in single partitions for half an hour for small pipes and cables as well. The multi sealant GR, which are graphite sealant. Then there's a, a multi sealant A for linear joints and a two component foam, uh, which is very good for redoing some. Um, uh, some openings afterwards, for example, with cable trays and cables. Cables can be added afterwards as well. And the same for the multifoam stone, which is like a preformed multifoam 2K. I've got some examples of that in our newly tested solutions as well. Um, the multi wrap, which is like a built in, it expands very highly. And this can also be used for uncapped, uncapped scenarios, again, for the like rainwater pipes and vented waste pipes, but also for insulation around metal pipes, for example. It will need to be built in, like in a coated board or in the multi-mortar. There we've got the multi-mortar, which is a um, fire stop mortar, which is mainly used in risers, and multi term backing to just back up uh, multi-sealant A and multi-sealant GR, the graphite in, um, sealant. So, now I will talk a little bit more about our new solutions. All our old solutions, I should say so, can be found already in the multi-selector. But um, all multi-call products will have an ETA report, either for fire dampers, penetrations, but also this is a new norm, resistance to smoke. And they can be found in uh, ETA or classification reports, the new solutions, or in the multi-selector. So if we look at the multi-selector, which you can find either on your phone or on the website itself. There it is, the multi-selector. And if I'm looking into the multi-selector now, this is just like an example, you can see here new, and that will tell you like, okay, this is newly added to the system recently. And the same applies for the phone as well. So one of our new tested solutions is with fire dampers with RFT fire dampers and the most common fire dampers that are being used, we've tested with our uh, multi-mastic C system. As you can see here, I won't go too deep into this, but um, you can see like we've got the data for that as well. And you can see here, you will still need to have like a metal frame around the opening. And that's mainly due to the stability also because of the requirements of the dampers. Um, it's always good to have a look at what the requirements of the dampers are, but it's um, giving you peace of mind to know that we have tested it with these dampers as well. Um, so this information can be found in our multi-selector on the website, but it can also be found on the website of RTF dampers as well. Um, what we've done recently as well is having a look at the multi mastic C system and trying to see if we could reduce the distances between the surfaces and also the distances between the edges of the opening as well. So it used to be 100 millimeters, but now we have been able to have zero millimeters, so no distance actually from the top of the penetration to, uh, to your first surfaces. And the same, you can see it on the right hand side as well, at the bottom. So you can actually lay like a cable tray on the, on the, on the floor, if I should say, of your penetration going through a wall. 
um, it's also zero between multicolor slim. Um, so that makes it ideal if you have like more than one uh, maximum 110 millimeter pipes going through a coat, our coated board, our multi mass C system, they can be now very close together, whilst in the past they had to be 100 millimeters apart from each other. And also zero between stone wool sleeves around metal pipes, for example, and zero between cable trays. Um, some distances uh, we have been able to reduce a little bit, like between a multicolor slim and a rock wool sleeve, stone wool sleeve, for example, that's 25 millimeter now. But it's really good news that we have been able to uh, reduce a lot of distances to zero because, you know, on sides, the areas are always so congested. You don't always have space to, um, to put your surfaces further apart from each other. Another completely different system is um, our copper pipes with like an elastomeric insulation around it. We have tested it now in a single bed system. So this is a 60 millimeter bed and it's already coated to both sides of the wall. Now it's a 60 minute fire rating and you just need a 20 millimeter depth and 15 millimeter um, multi-sealant GR, the graphite around it. Now, normally with our coated board system, because you use two layers, you do not need to frame the opening. But in this case, you will need to frame the opening um, for your dry lining, because otherwise the, the bed would fall inside the opening as well. And you got actually a big gap where fire could get through. So in this case, you do need to line the opening. But with the two layers of bed, you normally don't need to line the opening. Um, this is a question that has come to us so often that we decided to start testing it as well, which is the rectangular ventilation duct. And as it's most commonly used flush against the soffit, we've tested that. So with the multicolor only to the three sides of that duct and a single multicolor slim to both sides of the walls will achieve 120 minutes. So that's absolute brilliant result. Uh, and we've listened to the install us to see like what's happening so we could um, we could make some solutions for them and test them and so this is all third party tested as well um, also if it sits just inside the wall so it's not flush to the soffit we've got it tested uh, for 90 minutes but actually when we've tested it with our multi mastic C system our coated board system it's tested to 120 minutes as well so um, it might be that not all these solutions are on the website yet, but the details for this can still be asked for. That's no problem at all. But it's one of these things that just it, we've been asked so often. So we listen and we um, supply with like tested data. The same, especially in the summertime um, with the Python beverage tubes or the drinks tubes. Um, these are tiny, tiny little tubes where your uh, beer and um, soft drinks will go through. And um, especially like in hotels and pubs and bars, they are being used a lot. They have some insulation around it. So you get your nice cold drinks as well. And of course they don't want condensation everywhere. So that's why they are insulated to keep the cold actually inside these tiny little tubes. So we have tested that. Um, with our multicolor slim again, up to 120 minutes. And we've also tested it because you don't always have like a nice neat gap in your floor or in your wall. So we've tested it with our coated board as well. And that also achieves up to 120 minutes. And the maximum of like the opening can be like with the insulation 145 millimeter, which I think is something like 25 little tubes inside that insulation. So that's the maximum. So of course, if you have less, that's perfectly fine as well. And of course, we've tested it with floors as well. Um, now also with air conditioning pipes, with insulation around them, um, very often they will be combined in a bundle and it's not always possible to split up these bundles. So we've seen what is the maximum we can put in a bundle to still make it practical for yourselves to fire stop it and so we've got six pipes but also we've 
included three cables because you will nearly always have a cable with your air conditioning pipes. And of course, they have like some insulation around it as well. And with a single multicolor slip on each side of the wall, you can achieve 60 minutes. Um, but, but you might just have to, one air conditioning pipe, uh, well, one air conditioning unit with two pipes and one cable. And you might not always have the space for your color around it. So we've also tested it with like the graphite um, just inside the opening as well. So you've got a flush detail here that you can use as well. And um, information again can be um, can be asked for if, when you need when you need it and when you come across this as well. Now this is um, one of my favorites actually because the Multifoam 2K is such a brilliant product because it you can install it from one side which makes it already great but now for larger openings where you've got a lot of cables coming through and you might have the chance of having to change cables which can be done really really easily with the multifoam 2k so we've got like a big opening with um our multi C system, the coated board system, but then where the cables are or where the cable tray is, you actually fill it up with Multifoam 2K. So it's a really quick installation as well. And it gives you the advantage of being able to change cables afterwards without having to redo the whole opening. So that's really great. And um, it, it's the Multifoam 2K is more expensive than a coated board. So it also takes the expenses out of like having to fill the whole opening, which sometimes can be quite large, with multi-foam 2K or multi-foam stone. And it's, of course, really, really quick and easy to just fill a gap with the cables instead of having to cut out around all the cables and around all the little openings that you've got. Um, the same we've done for the floors as well, in rigid floors. And the depth is here for 60 minutes. The depth is only 100 millimeters of multi-foam 2K. So it's um, it's a really brilliant solution. Oops, that went a little bit too quick, but I hope you still have been able to look at the pictures. Now, bus bars is also something that pops up uh, occasionally. Of course, they are mainly copper and, or aluminium. So we've tested them with copper and aluminium bus bars. And the problem with bus bars is that they've got so much metal that conducts heat really, really well. So you will need to insulate them really well in order to achieve your insulation factor on the other side of your floor or of your wall. So in the seal of the opening, you've got like your two uh, layers of multi mastic FB, your, multi, your coated board system. But then to insulate the bus bars, so to make sure that the heat doesn't get straight through them, um, you have a length of 400 millimeter on top and below of, uh, of your floor penetration. And you screw them together with extra long multi screws FB that are 90 millimeters at 200 millimeter centers. Um, so we have this system tested both in walls and in floors. And you can see here that. Again, you don't need to line the opening uh, that you have with your around your uh, multi mastic seaboard. But here you can see, like, we've got extra long multi screw FBs, which are 90 millimeters. So, again, it's something that came to us quite often what to do with bus bars. And so, we are making sure that you've got now a tested solution how to fire rate these. Dimensions uh, increased for the um, multi-disc. The opening for the multi-disc was originally 26 millimeters, but we've retested it now, so it's 32 millimeters. And this is applicable to all previously tested solutions on the multicolor, on the multi-selector, uh, apologies. So again, it just gives you a bit more flexibility when you have a slightly bigger opening, uh, six millimeters bigger, that we can do this. 
then the multi-mastic SP, even though multi-mastic SP is mainly used for smoke seal around openings, and for example, with our multicolor slim, in this case, we have also used it as a coating onto the um, uh, metal pipes, for example. And again, you can use it for small metal pipes in walls and in floors on both sides. And so it absorbs some of the heat to achieve your thermal rating of the, of the, uh, of the pipe and of the fire stopping. The flexible gas pipes, I was telling you about that earlier as well, um, like new materials that we are using at the moment. And for example, here you can see some um, flexible gas pipes. They are like um, a quite flexible metal with like a plastic sleeve around it. And we have tested these like in a single pipe for 60 millimeters. But when we have them bundled, we have tested them up to 40 millimeters, as you can see, like in the cable baskets and uh, going through the wall. So we've tested them with like the multicolor slim, mainly when they go through floors, but also with the multi-term bandage, as they are like for large part metal, they um, uh, the multi-term bandage will pretty much make sure that the heat doesn't expand too much to the other side of the wall. And you can see um, as well in the pictures on the right hand side, the multi-term bandage um, is only 75 millimeters. So normally it's 150 millimeters. So you can actually cut it in two. And this again saves you, um, saves you on materials on site as well. And we've got it tested up to 120 minutes. Now, in the Netherlands, there's a new um, uh, requirement for smoke resistance. And so we've done a smoke resistance test to a Dutch norm, which is there since the 1st of July. Uh, SA, which is like a cold smoke, and S200, which is a hot smoke. And this is spe specific for the Dutch market. And you can see it here, like for smoke seals around um, the penetrations but also for joints uh, between walls and end walls as well. So that were the new um, solutions. Now I will very briefly go into the tools that we have and especially the multi-selector because this is just such a brilliant tool to find solutions yourself. Um, as I mentioned before, you can find it on the uh, computer or you can find it on the phone. Uh, it's just uh, the Mulco app. And what it actually does, it's like a filter that goes through all the classification reports, test reports, and ETAs that we have, all like third party tested. And it goes through a big filter. And then you actually say what you want to filter it on. So you look for the type of construction, the fire rating, the type of material, et cetera, et cetera, if it's got insulation or not. And then uh, once that's all put in, a tested solution will come out. And this tested solution, uh, you can download or you can print it. And it has got a link to the ETA or the classification report. And it has got the details and you can send it to other people. So in reality, what it looks like, like it's it's starting with like um, uh, this uh, this page. Do you want to base it on the construction or base it on the product? So if you know already, like you've got for example some uh, multicolor slim still, you can just base it on a product, and otherwise you can base it on the construction, and then it will ask you actually if it's going to be a wall or a floor. And there's always like a little contact button as well that you can uh, use for any help that you might need. So if you say it's a wall, um, you can see the different walls that we have. You can see here again, like um, this is a few months old. Now we had like new solutions for like a 75 millimeter wall, but we're looking here at a hundred millimeter wall. And then for a single penetration, that's like uh, one type of like penetration going through the wall. So it could be, one pipe, but it could also be like a cable bundle or a cable tray. That's still a single penetration. Multiple penetrations where different uh, pipes, for example, go through one opening in the wall, or you can look at a blank penetration, a 
blank opening that doesn't have any penetrations going through. So we're looking in my example at a single penetration. And here you can see like we're looking at different types of applications as well and different configurations or positions of your penetrations. Like is it going horizontally through a wall or with pipes mainly? Like are they um, on the floor? Do they have an elbow? Is there a socket going through the wall, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, or at like 45 degrees angle? So you, you can choose here as well, like, oh, you might have a different position of your penetration. So you can choose that here. In my case, I'm going for the horizontal. And then it will give you all the types of um, penetrations that you might have. So it could be a PVC pipe, but it could be a fiber composite pipe or a stainless steel pipe, which I'm going to look for in this case. As I mentioned before, you do not have to uh, remove the insulation. You just need to make sure that the gap created by any um, combustible insulation will be filled up. And for example, I'm looking in my case at Armaflex, and then it will give you actually all the Molkel products that we have tested with the stainless steel pipe with Armaflex insulation. So you might say like actually I will use multi-sealant graphite or you might say actually it sits so close in the wall I can't put any graphite around it I don't have that like 15 millimeter width around my pipe and so you might go for a multicolor slim so it will give you different options so you might see some options that you have not thought about before then again it will give you like some options to make sure that is this what you're looking for on the left and the top you can still go back to um, um, any of the steps you've taken. So here are the steps again. And if you click on one of the options, it gets you to the next page where you actually got again, like what we've chosen, like a flexible wall, this uh, pipe going through. You can see the details here as well. You can download the, uh, the report that it comes from and you can actually see exactly where it comes from. So it's very easy to send this to uh, build the control officers, for example, or to the client to make sure that they're happy with this. Or you can go back to the solution, download it and print it, email it straight away to somebody or save the solution. And when you save the solution, you can use it as well in, for example, a data manager and a project manager. Now, the project manager is actually just a tool to make a lovely little booklet out of all these tested solutions that you found on the multi-selector. You can adapt it to your project, put them all together, and then you've got a PDF of this book. And again, it's got like a link in this PDF that can um, take you back to the test report or the ETA and to the manual as well. Whilst with the data manager itself, it's a system of and so it's ideal to record all your fire stopping. It's a requirement nowadays as well. And it's based on all the multiple solutions. So you can see they are all linked together. The whole multi-selector, the project manager and the data manager are all linked together. And you can see like you add solutions, you add your, um, your tags or your pins to the fire stopping on site, you add pictures to it, you can then edit it when it was done, by whom it was done, what the fire rating is. You can add the details to it, like the chosen solution, which will give you a link back to the multi-selector again. And again, of course, in the end, you create a logbook with the floor plan. And you can see here, this is, uh, well, not on my screen at the moment, but this is an interactive link going back to your multi-selector solution. And of course, you can add pictures to it as well. So just to give you a little flavor of what the data manager is, I have come now to the end of my uh, presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Apologies that I've overrun a little bit in time, but I hope you found it interesting and of use for your projects and for your fire stopping. Again, thank you very much. I will stop the recording now and